Well, I, I did work with uh, Vickers Armstrongs at Naval Yard uh, for a, a few years. Went back to Australia, but then they asked me, or I was asked to come back uh, to join a new project here, which it was, at, I guess, at the time to be the nuclear submarine in developing a British version of it. And I um, rejoined Barrow because they were the submarine end of Vickers shipbuilding. Sir Leonard Redshaw was really the um, uh, force behind this. Uh, and he said, I'd like us to have an underwater capability, deep underwater capability. And we'd seen the possibility of having a small submersible uh, diving to 10,000 feet. And uh, this was built here. It, it involved, of course, a very accurate sphere uh, in high tensile steel, which uh, we're fully capable of uh, producing here in Barrow. Uh, it did mean uh, the interesting prospect of machining a big sphere uh, of uh, six foot, seven foot diameter in high tensile steel. And that was done, and uh, that became the basis of um, the underwater capability, if you like. Um, how do you make these work and earn a bit of money? And uh, one of the ways was um, diving on underwater cables, which were exposed on the surface and even bridging across uh, uh, valleys, if you like. And uh, it would have tooling that enabled it to scrape a a trough to bury the cables in and then to uh, um, protect it over the top. And this was in three and four thousand feet of water, mind you, you know. Um, so you need to find a couple of chaps who were prepared to, uh, you know, deal with these. Uh, and they, 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 the, the spheres that they lived in uh, formed submersibles with power and that sort of thing, and uh, they had scrapers and various tongs and that sort of thing for uh, operating. And of course they had a mothership that they worked from. That was the one, it, it surfaced after a dive of, I don't know, 2,000 feet. And suddenly a rope caught around the lever that held... See, there's two spheres. There's the one with the man in, and then there's a ballast sphere, which um, changes the weight to either rise or fall, uh, you know. And the rope caught around this lever and snapped the lid off, you know, and of course it went straight down again with two men aboard. Um, so then the problem arose as to how do we get these guys back, you know, before they run out of oxygen and that sort of thing. And we managed to assemble them very quickly by air and that sort of thing and help from others. And uh, we got on site with um, our mothership. Um, you know, we had a mothership for each of these submersibles. And uh, we dived on them, uh, on, on the um, accident side, if you like, to try and get a uh, a rope on it and uh, to lift it to uh, clear out to sea. It sounds easy, but it's uh, you know, quite a bit of a, a task, really. I mean, we achieved that and uh, got them up uh, before they ran out of oxygen. It was a pretty close thing, really. Um, so that uh, was the deepest rescue ever from the sea, and that was 2,000 feet out, I think. Do you remember how you felt when you finally realised you'd rescued the two guys. Oh yeah, we went off and we had a bit of a drink with the lads. <laughs> it was a sort of a champagne of sorts, I think locally made actually. But uh, yes, we were quite pleased to get them back, weren't we? Commander of the British Empire uh, as a, a title. There is it. Uh, oh, I wonder what that is. Oh, that's the one for going to parties. <laughs> yes.